Hi, my name is Dr. Wallet, and I'm here to welcome you to my introductory lecture series to MRI physics. When my residents and I had first made the decision to make bootleg recordings of these talks, I really didn't know what I was doing. It was the first time I ever recorded anything, and frankly, the first half of the first lecture is very difficult to listen to because of a severe echo that came through in the recording. However, at the encouragement of several of my residents who later watched it and said it was at least tolerable, I've decided to post it anyway. So with that, I offer an apology. If you can't listen to it, it's really just the basic intro stuff which you can find in any MR book, and I would just move on to the second video in the series. So thank you for watching, and keep an eye out for my interactive educational website, which should be up and running in the next several months. Thanks again. Alright guys, well, welcome. Uh, uh, this, this is going to start going to our start officially start the physics of MRI talk series. So we're going to have technical difficulties and we can't still it's not quite working. But we're just going to move on. Um, this is going to be a multi-part series. We'll start at basics, uh, basics uh, and move on from there. It will be every Tuesday, every Tuesday uh, at noon. Uh, so, of course, all of us always will. Always will. The, the talks are organized so that we start uh, we'll start out basics, eventually we'll move on to how we achieve spatial locations in MRI, MRI. Um, um, how we how we think about signal quality, quality, and how and images are images weighted, are weighted, weighted in terms of contrast. 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 Also, there's also a lot of artifacts artifact artifact that you need to know. Need to know. Test. Test. These are going to be these are going to be throughout the different talks. Usually, I'll talk about them whenever we're discussing the physics. Okay, so it's a very difficult topic. Of course, if you have any questions, questions at any time, questions at any time stop me, raise your hands, raise your hands, hands confusing, confusing. And I know I tend, I know to, I tend to just uh, uh, barrel through the things sometimes, sometimes, so, sometimes. So please do, please do. Ask questions, ask questions. All right, let's All right. start with let's the very basics. Very basics. Okay. Okay. Magnetism, Magnetism, just as a, just a, a definition. definition. We measure that we in measure that Tesla, Tesla, right, for our MRI machines. Gauss is the older measurement. One Tesla has about 10,000 Gauss. What types of magnets are there? Well, there are ferromagnets. Okay. Perfect example being the Earth. Or more specifically, the core, core is a permanent, a permanent, a permanent magnet. magnet. Not too strong, you'll notice it's, it's only 50 mega Tesla, 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 Um Just to give you some perspective, the, 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 the magnets on your refrigerator are about 5 million Tesla or 50 Then we have electron magnets, which you all are pretty familiar with. I'll remind you of the right hand rule. We have current flowing through a wire, magnetic field by field, wrap around that wire in the relative to the direction of the direction current. <coughs> so that brings us to our MRI, MRI machine. MRI machine that's, that's a large electron. Large 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 usually, usually on the order of half to nine Tesla experimental magnets go up 11, 12, 12, 13 Tesla. Especially for small animal magnets. Frog levitation occurs in about 16 Tesla. This is a real experiment. So you verified it. You can look it up. But yeah, so this is an electromagnet. 16 Tesla. And the frog is so light relative to the water content. Its body, its body, that, uh, that the, uh, the motion of all the, of all the electrons in all the water content in the frog is enough to, enough to create opposing, opposing magnetic fields to that 16 Tesla field, 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 Mm. Uh, completely unrelated to MRI, right. however, but pretty frogs are pretty frogs are pretty frogs are pretty All right, so uh, nuclear right, magnets, so magnets or, or more precisely more precise uh, nuclear magnetic dipole moments. Now remember that remember that the nuclei are composed of particles, right? The fundamental particles carry charge and charge and so think of it, think of it as accurate, like tiny electron, tiny electron, moving charge that's going to that's going to create a magnet. Okay. So, okay. a few so caveats, few caveats before, we begin. before we begin. Number one, I am going to lie to you over the course of these talks. Now, why am I going to lie to you? Sometimes, 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 the actual physics, the actual physics is complex. complex. Maybe it's not such a significant point that we can point out an explanation. Um, if it just um, kind of helps you to understand it or to the test, or in some cases, frankly, I don't know what time is going on. And so, I won't be able to tell you, so I'll probably just lie to you. I'll tell you one little piece of it that I know. However, when I am, when I am, I will tell you how much part of it. You'll know when you're not going to make sure or what I'm sure or something. That's something a little that's off. A little off. Okay, so for okay, example, for example start with, start with, start nuclei are not nuclei actually, not actually, actually not electromagnets. Not they just, it's it's an intrinsic property that they, they are magnetic. That's a quantum physics. That's a quantum physics. 
Case in point, I don't point. Point. Understand. So, understand. So, understand. so for now, for now, nuclear dipole nuclear moments, dipole moments, 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 moments. All right. So, all right. Now, so let's talk about what it takes to have an economic. If you are, if you are in new case, there's a few things to consider. To consider whether or not you have appreciable mass. So, nucleons, so nucleons, neutrons have an appreciable mass. For the scale we're talking about, we're talking electron mass is negligible. Spins that are spins that are impaired, meaning balanced charges. Um, and um, when, and that happens, when that happens, then you don't have the cancel at that moment. So, so, so you know, they want things to be want things to be so, so, so not let's forget about electrons. Electrons for now. For now. Um, and you have um, to have an odd mass number, right? So that way you have a neutron and a neutron and a proton each other, or at least an odd proton proton number. Z. So Z. here's so an example here's of a lie. I told you I told things have to be have unpaired. Be but, if you have but if you have an even total even mass total number, mass but as long as you have an odd number, number of protons, the fact that the proton the on a macroscopic scale is charged will override, will override the, the, the contribution from neutron, neutron, neutron as the overall as the nuclear, nuclear, nuclear uh, uh, magnetism. magnetism. So, so Key point, key point, odd mass number odd or, mass odd or odd protein. A couple of examples, examples. what we always what use, we always proton, use proton, H1, H1, that, H1, that is MR active, MR it has it one has proton, one so an odd proton, 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 proton and an odd mass, and number. Odd mass number. What about, what about a deuteron? A deuteron. So, so, a proton and a neutron. And a neutron. Well, well, so now this has an so even mass an number, even but mass remember, number, proton is more proton is more neutron. So because there's an odd proton number, that's active. Phosphorus 31, 31, 15 protons, 15 neutrons. Odd number of protons, odd mass is MR active. Helium, 4, 2 protons, 2 neutrons. Even number, everything's canceling out. You get nuclear resonance and also no magnetic dipole moment. Nucleus. Nucleus. Okay. This is the really boring stuff I've found. Okay, so, okay, okay, so, assuming, so that assuming that you have you have atomic nucleus, nucleus that is MR that is active, precession occurs. precession occurs. That is to say there's a complex so motion. motion. So you know that the nucleus is always spinning, right? Always spinning right, constantly, right, right, constantly, right, constantly, right. Um, but that's kind of okay, that's kind of my whole round we're spinning on the MC. When you're in an external magnetic field, if you've ever seen the way a top the way a top or a gyroscope works, it spins, spins or a top, it'll be spinning, and if it gets off axis, it also precesses. Well, that's precessing well, because, because of the rotational of the motion, motion prevention it from falling directly in a gravitational, gravitational field. Gravitation field. The same thing happens same with nuclear, nuclear magnets and in a and large in a external, external magnetic field. field. So, so based on based the on spinning this, this way, it also way, precesses like this. Like if, say, this. if say B0, B0 magnetic field is from the floor of the Okay, so that's okay, so you can also call that also call the wobble. The wobble. Um, and this happens and this at the Larmor frequency. frequency. Still boring stuff. Still boring stuff. The, the Larmor equation, equation tells us a lot. It's directly related it's directly to the external, external magnetic, magnetic field. The field. Remember, we call this B0. I know there's a lot of terms. B0, think about the Bohr in the Bohr of the magnet. That's where B0 is. The magnetic field. It also is a perception on the type of the nucleus. So we give it a constant. The gyromagnetic, the gyromagnetic ratio, ratio which, is which is just the characteristic of a material, of a material you know, like density, you know, like density, density, electron number, electron whatever, 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 well, think about your roots, think about your gyro magnetic ratio, ratio. What is gyro? Gyro, gyro, gyro spinning, right? Or spinning. Or so, or so. What's the gyro part? The gyro part of the magnetic, 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 magnetic part of the zero. So gamma is gamma is over B zero. B zero. The gyro magnetic ratio. Gyro. 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 And then if you remember that, you remember that. You can always recreate the one with the equation. Um, okay, so okay, so real quick, just real check quick, for just check any question. Any question? If a current is running, current is running wire, wire, is wire negative, negative, from negative, negative, from negative, positive, positive. Which which way does the induced magnetic, 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 magnetic,
I guess. I heard yes. uh, in and out of the screen. Very good. That is correct. Right hand rule. Right hand rule. Just warm it up. Just warm it up. Um, okay. Um, okay. Which of the following Which sentences, the following is, sentences not is not interactive? Interact. Which of these things Which could, these you, things could you image, image, image in an hour? Heavy water. Heavy water. Heavy water. Heavy water. Heavy water. Heavy water. Heavy ATP. ATP. I give you a little bit of gaming boss for a second. Six for a second. Six for a second. Six for a second. Graphite. Or technician. Or technician. We all know one. We all know one. Medical medicine. Yes. You are correct, sir. Correct, sir. Graphite. Because? Because? It's a carbon is 12. And the proton number is 6. Proton number is 6. 12. 12. 12. It is not going to be the MRC. Carbon is never going to be an MRC. Okay. Now, according to the law of equation, if the gyro magnetic ratio is about 43 megahertz per Tesla, for a water proton, what is the resonant frequency that it's been set at? So 1.5 Tesla magnet, and then 3 Tesla magnet. So the hint I've given you the RMR equation here, which is F4 gamma, for exceptional frequency, equals the gyro magnetic ratio, which is 43 million, times B0, which is dependent on the magnet on the magnet. So if you just rearrange, very good. Very good. So if it's 43 megahertz per Tesla in a 1.5 T magnet, that's 1.5, that's right. Uh, times three. Uh, times Very good. Three. And, and we wanted to we wanted have this question just to establish this number, number, number 64 megahertz. We're going to talk about it a lot, lot, especially in the second. In the second. Oh, we're really getting into the way really things move. Really okay. So, okay. enough with so, the boring, boring basic, basic intro physics intro stuff. Let's start talking about start talking about some actual MRI stuff. And the orientation of the machine. I want to. I want to hear there's a lot of words, a lot of terms that people use and use and hard to keep straight. So I want to go over them all, make some definition and definition. And let's, I guess, start by looking at what happens to a population of proton in the board of the Okay. We're also going to describe the models that we use to talk about these things. Speaking of just speaking terms, of just any magnetization is going to be called capital M. So all the different magnetization magnetizations are going to have a few different kinds. This is an MRI machine. MRI machine. Easy part, you guys know. It is a giant is a giant We also are so that. Think of it as a giant giant coil inside that plastic housing. So there's a bore of the magnet. of the magnet. That's going to create just like this. Sample question. Sample question. This is my method. It creates a magnetic field into an onto the screen. Okay, so into the bore of the magnet. Now this is called B0 by default. We call the main magnetic field B0. And we say that we say that point zero point direction C direction conventions conventions. Obviously, you can change any of these, but when we talk, when we talk. Do it. Do it. Thus, since any magnetization is created by capital M, 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 M is the direction in the magnet, then MZ is also, is also the name for longitudinal magnetization. And assuming everything is at equilibrium, B0 is going to be equal to MZ is going to be equal to B0 at an X. Okay, so MZ would be equal to MZ. Um, and we assume, and we assume so this isn't true, this isn't true in the real world, in the real world. that we try to get it as much as possible. These zero is assumed to be constant and, and uniform. And uniform. Right. All, right. All right. So here's our magnet. Here's now let's start now talking, start about, talking about, about MXY. MXY. It's, a it's a magnetization in the XY plane. We can also call this a transverse magnetization. MXY, MXY is basically, is basically think of it as, think of it as, as, as a boring magnet. MXY, MXY, MXY are axial, axial slices, slices of, magnetization of magnetization that are perpendicular, that are perpendicular to, to M. M. Okay. Okay. MXY is MXY zero is rest. Zero we're going to talk about that about great length later. Right right um, um, and, and we also need to know that there are magnetic gradients that can be superimposed upon MC and MXY. Okay. These gradients These are gradients not are on, on, on purpose, purpose and done so and in a predictable way. way. This is really this jumping, really jumping ahead, ahead, just ahead, just to show just some of the already 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 these different, different, different positions, positions cause different, different, different processional frequencies. 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 So you can identify so the two protons. Notice the bigger ones on the left, ones on the left, smaller ones on the right. Ones on the right. That's, that's really, 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 really simple. Uh, 
the gradient coils, the gradient you guys have all heard, 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 heard of these things. So we have so coils we have that will produce, produce gradients other than, other than P0. P0. And basically there are three, three of them, and they're in the cardinal directions in which they point, or at least the relative directions as we should find as we define point. And these these are called, instead of B0, BX, BY, and BC to be in the direction. You can see here, right, the X coil can create a magnetic gradient left and right. The Y coil creates from up to down. And the Z coil is a gradient that will create a gradient that moves in the B0 direction and the C direction. So it then makes B0 and Y more predictable. So that's for spatial localization. That's the topic of our next lecture. Now, now, let's take a look at the models. Take a look at the models. There's, there's two models. models. There's two models. Two models. Two models. Two models. Uh, had to include the heavy models, so that people can call them taxes, call them houses. But both are valid. There's, there's the classical the model and the quantum model. model. And this is how you know, we should think about it. Think about it. Now, now, I think when, when you read textbooks, they tend to explain these things, and they sort of give you the classical model, or they give you the quantum model, but they never come out and say that these are different models that have two different ways of explaining things, and neither of them paint the picture, and so they just use whichever one is better to describe this one, you know, a fact, you know, a very confusing, so we're going to try to parse them out, parse them out, and and be able to separate the two. Okay, so let's look at the classical model. The classical model is the spinning top model. So all the, all the protons are spinning around, right? Spinning around. right. And setting right. up their, setting up their magnetic dipole moments, moments as we talk. Okay. 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 These things tend to magnets and magnetic field. They'll either align with the magnetic field or against the magnetic field. The magnetic field. Okay. 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 Um, over time, now again, this is when the classical, classical model is not clear on how this happens, happens, but over time, more, time, more of these more will tend to be aligned parallel, parallel, parallel with B0. With B0. Okay. 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 In the end, you're going to end up getting a net vector in the longitudinal direction. So here's an example of a bunch of spinning protons, and we see what happens. You know, more than a point up than a point down, but they're all pointing in Kepler-like directions. As a result, you get a net vector in a positive Z direction. That's going to be your B0. Now, notice there's no X, Y, X, Y, because since they're all randomly oriented, the X and Y components of each sub-vector, individual vector, can't each other out. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? So it might start getting a little confusing here. So the spin top model is good for understanding, understanding our pulses, 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 pulses in a second, but bad, bad for understanding relaxation. relaxation, relaxation. relaxation. Now, talking about the quantum, quantum model, model. model. Assuming that your proton is MRI active, active, there are two there are quantum states that it can be intimidated by the third quantum, which is means just screens to say. So either it's pointing in the direction of zero or against the direction of zero. There is no motion, there's no motion, there's no slow rotation. Any of that. Any of that. And so basically it's either parallel or anti-parallel. And when it's parallel, it's a lower energy state. Now, in nature, in nature, these things are every individual individual is actually flipping back and forth very rapidly. Very rapid. You know, a thousand times a second. And it just so and happens, just so that happens that there's an equilibrium that gets set up, gets favoring the lower energy state energy as we see as we see the rest of nature. Rest of nature. Rest of nature. And it and it so happens to be so happens at one point five field about nine protons, nine protons, nine protons, uh, hydrogen nuclei per million, per million will orient themselves themselves with with rather than against. So you have like a million and nine million and nine versus a versus a million. Um, and those um, lines, those lines is, that's is, where that's all of our MRs are. It's amazing, actually, when you think about it. But, all right, so the all difference right, so in energy the state energy can be related to the law of frequency. Um, and you, um, you, you think about it as the RF pulse being actually a quantum of energy that you deliver, which will cause these protons to flip or not. And if the energy difference doesn't match, then you won't get any change of state, which is why, again, again, Okay. okay, so this is good so for is understanding, good for understanding uh, relaxation, uh, relaxation, 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 rela
whenever to gather themselves. Any questions? Any questions on the basic on the intro stuff? Intro stuff so far. So far. All right. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna run through the complete generation of the MRI signal. You may very well get lost. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. That's okay. I just want you to hear everything. We're gonna return to every individual aspect. Go through it in more detail. Detail. We're gonna use this as an opportunity to be to remain relevant to the topic at hand and use all of our new terms and some of our some of our. Foundations. Foundations. Again, Again, don't forget. Ask don't questions. Forget. Ask Please questions. Go. All right. All right. <clears throat> so let's start, so let's start from the beginning. T1, T1, you've all heard of. Now, T1 goes by many names, uh, which probably sound like they might be a great topic to speak on. Recovery, recovery of the MC is the same, is the same thing as gain in longitudinal magnetization, which is caused by spinalized spinalization or T1 relaxation. All four of those terms are exactly the same thing. So, whenever you read them, you read them, you think, how are talking about? It's all It's all the same. It's all the same. MZ is still going to be. Zero, zero, and T zero, zero, T zero. Right. All, All of your magnetic fields, fields are, are randomly, randomly oriented. Randomly oriented. And, if and if I put you in the, the middle of a, middle of a 20 Tesla magnetic field, it doesn't matter. You're still going to be, still gonna be zero. At zero. zero. And you're also randomly right. oriented. Right. It takes time, it takes time for, these, for these spins, spins to align spins themselves, align themselves, themselves which is why we think of the quantum model of proton splitting. Once they're in that magnetic field, they start flipping, right? And it starts setting up. This energetic equilibrium. So over time, so over time slowly, the longitudinal magnetization station grows. grows. So we say so MZ MC accumulates. accumulates. This spin lattice relaxation. T1 itself so is just a time. Just, it's time. Just, literally it's just, just a time measured in seconds. Or milliseconds. Or milliseconds. And it is it basically just the number just used, used to fit this curve. Fit this curve. So T1 is T1 is how rapid the MZ accumulates. In fact, in fact, it's exactly the exact amount of time it takes for 63 percent of the maximum MZ to MZ. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because that's it. Because that's it. Oh, okay. Okay. So this depends so on being a larger than the 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 as well as local field well disturbance. Right. If you have right. zero in homogeneity, or if there's metal in the patient or something, you should have something like that. All right. So that's all going to affect the T1, which is just a time. Uh, and the maximum is always going to be equal to the power. But so we call it M0. Right. M0. It's at the maximum. It's at the maximum. It's at the maximum. And just as a rule of thumb, T1 times T1 is always larger than T1. All right. All right. The RF pulse, for me, this is the hardest part. I still have a hard time picturing this. I think it's because you can't use either model to give you a theory picture. So for the RF pulse, we call the RF pulse also B1. See that sometimes. B1 is the RF pulse. Same thing. Same thing. It could be easier. Now, the best way to think about it is as a radio frequency. As an electromagnetic pulse in the radio frequency range. And it only and it works only when it's the same as the lower frequency. Why? Well, well, all right. So, all right. so this is from this is from from that initial from that initial. Picture. So you so have so all of your all your spins rotating, right? All the x y components are allowed. Yeah, that gives you direction. Now, if you were looking, you were looking, you were floating above this, and you were moving in a certain point, sixty-four million times per second, then actually all the spins would spins would stop, and they would look like they were stationary. We call this the rotating frame. Makes things easier. So assumption is so, rotating times we're looking at the magnetization factor and it just sits just, just, okay. just okay. Okay. Once you are once you are looking at the rotating magnetic frame, frame, now think about think about if I were to apply a second magnetic field along the x direction, that's going to apply to right? And so this this magnetization vector starts rotating out of the z points and out of the z directions and directions y points around the x axis. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting because because given the strength the strength of the system of the magnetic field, you can actually apply a second a second frequency. So remember the law of equation. We can plug ten micro tesla that one point five tesla into the law of equation. Which is much smaller. It's only four to twenty six hertz. 
six hertz. That means that all, means all of these magnetizations in unison are rotating around the axis at this frequency. And that's just a little quick math. Five thousand milliseconds in a second. Four point six seconds. That means in order for it to go from Z and rotate all the way around and back up to Z, it takes two point three four three four milliseconds. Okay, I just okay. have a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Now, let's think about, let's that. Think about that. That means that, that means if we that time this in certain ways, in certain ways it's going to have very distinct very effects distinct on magnetization. magnetization. Right. If I do half, I this, do half time, this time, so 1.17 1. 1. 1. milliseconds, milliseconds, I will be rotating will all, my all my magnetization out of the Z point and, and, and then into the negative Z. That's an inversion. That's an inversion, right? Yeah. If I did it for a quarter of that time, time 0 0.0, 0.0.56 seconds, that means I'm, I'm just applying a beam of 0.56 seconds, seconds at a certain, at a certain, frequency, at a certain frequency, frequency, and, and then it'll, you know, then it'll, it'll go, go you know, 90, 90 degrees. degrees. So all of so your all energy is gone, is gone, and you put in, you put in magnetization, magnetization is why the X, Y, okay, okay. That's what we're going to talk about next. So the so the RF pulse. We look at it in a quantum model. Think about it as sending in a photon that has an energy and energy to that energy difference between anti-parallel anti-parallel states. Once these energy packets get deposited, it causes a flip. So you think about it like there's nine out of a million, out of a million more more than the other whatever half a million that are pointing the up direction. So these are going to catch these energy packets and flip it. Back to the other way. So, so if you so send if you in enough, send of, these enough of these energy packets, which are sending them, you know, them, you know a certain yeah, rate over time, time, over time, then then it's going to flip, going until, to flip until there's an even there's an even which means which means it's going to be zero. Be zero. Now, now, how does MXY how does grow in this model? I can't even fathom why. Yeah. So, but just remember that you know, you know, the flip it. There's always a result. There's a result. So, so. And these are these are the these important, important ones to remember. At flip remember. angle of zero, M Z is maximized into an out of four, and M X Y is zero. The flip angle of ninety, M Z is emptied, and X Y is one eighty. One eighty. Invert M Z, and there's nothing. And there's nothing. Questions? Questions? Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about T2. That's another thing. It's often confusing. confusing. Once we have the transverse magnetization, the flash plane, which we've gotten there with the RF pulse, it's going to decay. Just like T1. T2 is just a time constant. And it's measured in seconds. And basically, it just describes how rapidly the signal goes away. So T2 is precisely how much time it takes for 3% of the transverse. Magnetization 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 now, why is it decaying? Well, because when you apply when you, the, RF the RF pulse, you put all the you magnetization, all the magnetization in, the in the X, Y, plane, and, and everything is in phase. phase. Now, there's slight, now, there's slight variations, variations from, from proton to proton, and their recessional precessions are slightly different. Right, which means that if you're watching it, watching it, some are going to pull out ahead, some are going to fall behind, and they're going to start to disperse. And when you have multiple uh, magnetization, uh, magnetization, they're all facing the same direction. direction. They, they sum they as a single as vector that's added in. Added in. And as they disperse, the net vector net shrinks. 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 Right. And that's actually, and that's, that's actually, what we're that's seeing. Seeing. The magnetic vector, vector, vector going away. Going away. Why does this happen? Does this happen? Okay, so it's another okay, thing. So people, thing like, people use T2 and spin spin interaction. interaction. Interchangeably, interchangeably while there's spin spin interaction, spin interaction, which is basically, basically just transfer of energy, energy, energy between different, between different uh, nuclei. Uh, nuclei. So they can so they sort can of speed one up, speed, one speed up, their neighbor up, and then they slow down, or vice versa. And that's what that will cause. Necessarily cause degradation. Also, if your B field is homogeneous, right, then the Longmore equations are going to be moving at different precessional frequencies. And, and tissue and susceptibility, tissue so the presence of anything that's paramagnetic, that's paramagnetic, 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 paramagnetic that later, later uh, will cause, will cause more, rapid more rapid 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 Okay, so okay, so. T2 star T2 and T2. 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 These are uh, these another thing that often confuse people. T2, T2, think about T2, 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 T2 is just a subset of T2 star. T2 star is every possible, possible thing that they can contribute to the loss of transverse magnetization. So it's been in action. The field of homogeneity, magnetic susceptibility, and getting shift effects. Whereas T2 is just as efficient as spin interactions. T2 times are the solution. But the main point that I want to make here is that T2 effects 
these things spin, spin, spin interaction, interaction, interaction are random, random, random and unpredictable. And thus, 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 they can never they be can reversed. Never that's information loss. That's loss. That's the law. That that always must occur. must occur in some in some instantiation. And here it's spin interactions. And then and then some some obviously aside from aside from the interactions teach you star effects are actually structures. Structure, right? If you have a B zero field in homogeneity, that field in homogeneity is always there. Always there. That means that means it's structured. It's structured. It's predictable. Thus, potentially reversible. Reversible. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So now measuring signals. We talked about the free induction. Okay. Okay. Now the same the same same coils that generate the generate is also also signal signal. So you have a receiver, so you have a receiver coil, coil that's sitting here, it's sitting here, listening to the spin in plus times, right? So, so when you have this magnetic moment, moment passing, through passing through the wire, through the wire, wire you're, going get, you're going to get also a vector amount, you're going to get a maximum, maximum uh, when you're uh, actually you're passing actually through the wire, the wire, and then it's going to be and zero when it's zero when it's passing the wire. So if you imagine this thing spinning around rapidly, that's exactly what we're seeing here. We're watching this thing watching this develop and go to zero and go to the other side and go back. But notice it's always shrinking. That's because of because those T two T two and T two star effects causing the signal to decay. So the the envelope of this free induction decay, 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 decay is like your T2, like your T2, your T2, your T2, your T2, your T2 star. Your T2 star. Okay. Okay. So this is going to, so without, without, without any sort of intervention, T2 star is going to be what you use to see, see how rapid the thing will be. And this is very fast, and actually can make it difficult to measure, right? You're going to be getting lower signals. So, Oh, here's an example oh, here's of an artifact. artifact. For example, For example this, is this is dental work. Right? Right? If you have right. something like metallic, metallic stuff, stuff, obviously, that, obviously that's, that's, magnetically that's magnetically active. We'll go into that a little bit more, 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 more detail later. later. But you can see all these warping and complete signal loss. And that's because not only those protons that are near the metal, which is causing the B0 field lines to bend, by the long run equation, these protons are still there. They're still there. They're processing at a different frequency. And at that frequency, it's significant. Differently different for megahertz, megahertz, which we've tuned our RF calls to activate, to activate in the rest of the room, and they're never and they're even going to be active. We're never going to have any signal. We're not going to see anything. In the farther in reaches of the B0 and homogeneity effect, where there is still some activation, it's going to diffase incredibly rapidly because of the bending of the magnetic field. So, little, so, little artifact interruption there. Interruption All right. So, right. let's talk so about refocusing. Now, now, that free induction, that free induction decay happens so rapidly, rapidly, and we had already kind of set it up that maybe there's some structured, predictable elements to this decay that we could possibly reverse it or refocus it. So, so, so scheme for scheme for this is a 90 degree R of R. Pulse. You get free induction, induction, decay, induction decay, and then you deliver and 180, 180 degree pulse, degree pulse. And your signal will come back up, come back up, and echo. And this is, and as we explained, as we because there's slightly because different there's slightly frequencies causing dispersion. dispersion. When you deliver the 180 degree off pulse, 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 right, you, right, you flip the signal, flip the signal and then so they and refocus, they refocus, refocus or defase, or defase, you know, in the opposite direction. So they refocus. It's kind of a difficult concept to handle. So I like thinking of it as an animal race. Think of the rabbit. Of the rabbit. So, so these are spinners that, that are processing are slightly, slightly faster, 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 slightly faster, higher slightly local higher magnetic field. field. The pig is going to be your 64 megahertz. Water proton and the turtle is going to be spinning slower because of how there's slightly lower local magnetic field. All right. 90 degree, 90 degree RF pulse. RF pulse. The animals are there. Animals are there. Right. They're in phase. In We're phase. Lined We're up lined getting up full signal. Full signal. Go. Go. Now, of course, now, the rabbit's spinning a little faster than the pig, which is pig next to the turtle. So, so, so in a brief in period of time, time, they're out of phase. Out of phase. Right. So you're getting like you're getting third of the signal here. But then when you deliver the 180 degree RF pulse, it's like telling them to turn around, go back, and now the fast the fast speed of the rabbit is going to cause it to catch back up, catch back up, and the Slowing down, slowing the turtles and the turtles all to go back into phasing. phasing. So this is how so this we is basically how we recover, recover our signal after we've, after we've done, done the 180 degree, degree inversion. inversion. Pulse. Pulse. So we can use that. So we can use that. Our signal back, back up. Okay. And then, and then, actually, actually, I'd like to, like to 
give us that uh, uh, it's actually it's actually a bit more at this point. Um, that was the like um, was basic to the basic to the um there's still some there's still some about the talk about the magnetism of magnetism material material um some um some mental mental uh imaging concepts like spatial frequency frequency uh case space case space transport and then I got and then I got some slash questions questions also listening but listening figure it's gonna be a long talk maybe we'll take a five minute break minute break stand up stretch stretch Wake up, wake up.